Welcome to this Equestrian Vaulting USA video series designed to inspire and educate our vaulting community on the One Star Compulsories. This video is about the stand. First, we will outline the essence and mechanics of the stand, followed by a more in-depth explanation of how to train and coach this compulsory. We will finish with guidance and tips from our kind judges. This video is made possible by the donations from the generous members of Equestrian Vaulting USA. Thank you. The Essence and Mechanics The essence of all compulsories is harmony with the horse. The additional essences that are specific to the stand are balance, body control, and posture. The vaulter comes to bench position. With both legs simultaneously and immediately, the vaulter hops to both feet with the pelvis as high up as possible while constantly absorbing the horse's canter. After hopping to both feet, the handles are simultaneously released as the vaulter rises into an upright standing position and takes the stretched arms out to the side while rising or once having reached the standing position. The head faces forward throughout. The static phase and the count of the canter stride starts when the static position is displayed. The canter movement is absorbed by the vaulter, mainly through the joints from feet to hip. The joints of the legs are bent just as much as necessary for absorbing the changes of the elevation of the horse's back. The upper body remains in a physiologically correct posture. The shoulders, pelvis, and the feet stay in a transversal plane parallel to the surcingle. The legs are parallel to the median plane of the horse. The knees and feet are at hip width and point forward. The feet remain stationary and the weight is evenly distributed over the entire soles of both feet throughout. The arms are stretched to each side along the frontal plane with the fingertips at eye level. The body remains supple and free from any tension other than the muscle action needed to absorb the canter and to keep the described posture. The vaulter is in a stable and controlled position. The counting of the canter strides ends when the build down phase starts. Upon completion of the static phase, the vaulter simultaneously brings their arms down while continuing to fully absorb the canter facing forward. The vaulter takes hold on the top of the handles, supports some of their weight on their arms, stretches the legs down and slides softly into the seat astride. Now we will go over some examples, drills, exercises, and positioning for the stand. This exercise is for developing flexibility in the calves as well as the ankles. Having flexibility in the calves and ankles is important for standing so that the vaulter is able to bend their knees without the heels raising up. If the vaulter has tight ankles or tight calves, this may cause them to fall into their toes when they're trying to stand on the horse with harmony. For this exercise, have your vaulter stand against a wall. Make sure that the heels are to the wall and that they're keeping their whole back flat against the wall, pressing their lower back as well as the back of their head into the wall. A great training tool for the stand is the BOSU ball featured here. You can simply start by having your vaulters practice their stand. They can look at each other or look in a mirror to find the correct positioning. You can then get creative with adding more difficulty in movements such as squatting, which helps with the stability through the ankles. You can then move on in progressions to standing on a single leg all the while trying to keep the surface of the BOSU ball as stable as possible. An additional way to add challenge in progression is to then have the vaulter close his or her eyes while performing various exercises as Daniel is showing here. You can then flip the BOSU ball onto the other side and repeat the same or similar exercises. Standing on the BOSU ball in this way is definitely going to help with increasing the mobility and the suppleness of the ankles. The next progression from here is again trying to squat, keeping the ankles and the joints supple with the movement as you'd want for harmony with the horse. The next progression from here is adding an air disc on top of your BOSU ball. This is another great tool to have for vaulters in general. 
You may also want to assist your vaulters with a spot as they learn this exercise. Again, working the progressions, finding first stillness. Once that has been mastered, you can perform squats, which as you can see is a great challenge and a great way to train balance as well as all the mobility and suppleness in the joints. Another great progression is adding level of challenge, including giving your vaulter a prop such as this to throw at a wall or to a partner. This helps with the feedback and the proprioception while balancing. You can use a yoga ball such as here to perform a free kneel, which is a great way to build balance as well as the core strength needed for stand. Next, we will show a series of exercises on the barrel. Of course, it's important to practice the positioning, including the way that the vaulter comes into and comes out of the stand on the barrel. Next, Daniel will add the air disc to the same exercise. The air disc, of course, provides an additional level of challenge. It also helps to develop the mobility in the ankles while also making sure that the knees and all of the joints in the body stay nice and supple, which is needed for harmony with the horse. If you're able to have access to a moving barrel as shown here, you can do this exercise where Daniel is actually starting off with straight legs. And this exercise then allows for the vaulter to experience the contrast of then when you see the joints, especially those knees and ankles really moving and absorbing the canter. No motion should be shown in the head. So you can imagine that that head stays exactly where it is in space. The next progression from here is adding that air disc to the use of the moving barrel, jumping to feet slowly, and this is a great way to increase the difficulty even beyond what it might take to stand on the horse. Adding layers and elements of instability as with the yoga ball and the air disc is always a great way to train for the sport of vaulting across the board. Another great drill that can be performed on a moving barrel or also a stationary barrel, as well as at the walk or the trot or even the canter, is going from a prince position to a stand. Make sure to have your vaulter do this on both legs. It's a great exercise to practice the dynamic capabilities of moving in and out of that stand while always moving with the horse. A progression from here is adding elements of moving from side to side. And a final progression is adding an element of speed once the vaulter has mastered it in a slower tempo. The final progression shown here is practicing a stand in other areas of the horse, including on the surcingle or even back on the croup. For vaulters still learning to gain the confidence of standing at the canter, a free kneel on the back can be a great exercise. This is a great drill for learning how to bring the hips underneath the chest to achieve a taller position with good posture. You can then see here how we can progress from the barrel to the horse, starting at the walk with the prince to stand to prince drill, making sure to do both sides. The coach can focus on reminding the vaulter to keep upright in their positioning. The next progression is going from a free kneel here, first gaining confidence and then adding the prince to stand in that direction, which surprisingly is actually a very much increased challenge. Another great drill for the walk is squatting. Once your vaulter has mastered this forward, you can increase to having them do squats in all directions. Make sure to watch that their foot stays completely in contact with the pad. So there's gonna be a big range of motion in the ankle here in order to perform that squat successfully with the mobility required in the ankles. Finally, another great drill is having your vaulter stand way back on the croup. Likely there will be much more motion here. So as you can see, it really requires that movement and suppleness in the joints. 
shown here is that free kneel at the canter, a great way to build confidence before then finally learning how to stand at the canter. As a coaching tip, once the vaulter is actually at the canter, remember to just have them focus on one or two things at a time. Hi, I'm Ali Navita, and today I'm going to be teaching you a few drills in addition to what Daniel has already taught that you can do for the stand. So one of my favorite ways to coach vaulters for warming up is this exercise where you can imagine there's a giant X or a plus sign in the ground and you're gonna have your vaulters come to starting off and they're gonna stick their landing and then they're gonna come back. <laughs> and even this is already a way to challenge the balance as you can see. And really what we're seeing is that softness in the ankle combined with a proprioception feedback of your core strength staying nice and strong as your legs move. So you can do that eight times on each side. And then once you've done that, you're then gonna imagine that there's a clock and you're gonna go on the right side from 12 o'clock and then you'll go to about two o'clock to turn, always facing center when you come back to the middle. You come back so you're getting a little bit of a turn. Once you've got that, you're gonna go all the way to three o'clock, land, let that ankle be nice and soft, really stick the landing. So go slow as you're learning it. You don't wanna just be sort of flailing about. The idea is you lock it, you find that softness in the ankle and come back to stability. And then finally, you can turn to about five o'clock and forward. You can use your opposite hand for balance. And again, you do about eight of these in each direction. And once your vaulters have truly mastered this and it's easy for them, then you can have them try to do it with their eyes closed. This is a great way to get the ankles warmed up, get your brain warmed up and get ready for a day of standing on the horse. Another great way to introduce this kind of proprioceptive or awareness of the feet and the body in space is to have your younger vaulters and older vaulters play games. So anything like hopscotch, where you're having to be very precise about where your feet are going, you can do that with the eyes closed. And I also find it's really helpful to be able to move backwards in space because then you're making these connections of where the eyes are looking to what the feet are doing, keeping the ankles and knees soft as you move. And this is gonna help the body to have that awareness as they're standing on their horse. So make sure to move in all different directions. You can have the vaulter step backwards. You can draw things. You can have ladders and shapes on the ground. So feel free to get creative. Keep challenging your vaulters and also make sure to let them have some fun and some success as they go. Hi, my name is Alejandro Orozco. I am an ABA judge as well as a Mexican judge and an international judge. I'm going to give you a few tips or comments on what we normally see as judges when we see each compulsory in a competition. For stand, for stand, I think one of the main discussions among all international judges and ABA judges is how to see harmony in stand. Obviously, it's easy to see when the same as flag when you're bouncing up and down, but it's more subtle with stand because you only have the sole of your feet as contact with a horse. So make sure that your whole foot is in contact and you don't put more weight on your toes than you do on your heels or vice versa. So we want to see you moving with your horse through your whole body. So that obviously not just the sole of your foot. We also want to see your ankles moving and your knees moving so that you can have the correct absorption in the stand. 